welcome everybody to October's chapter meeting here with the South Sound Swift Rider crew. And we're excited to have Christina Walker for a presentation later. But of course, we like to do our icebreaker first. And our icebreaker prompt is to share, of course, your name and your hidden talent, which Liz uh, so lovely mentioned that you do not have to demonstrate your hidden talent. That is not a requirement. If you'd like to, you're more than welcome to, but um, simply sharing it will do. And I will uh, demonstrate, not demonstrate. I'm not demonstrating my hidden talent actually, um, but I'll, <laughs> I'll go first. So I'm Stina Troyer and I'm the South Sound chair. And my hidden talent is the ability to identify a clam within seconds of it being obliterated by a hungry sea otter. Um, so I think my claim identification identification skills are a little rusty because I haven't done that field work since like 2011, 2012. Um, but my claim IDs are on point. So I'll take you to the beach and we'll identify some clams. And if they're getting eaten, all the better. So nice. My low key flex hidden talent. Woo. Uh, and I'm going to pop it over to Liz. Um, well, I was going to see, say singing sea shanties, but now I feel like a science competition is between us. So I'm going to say <laughs> identifying skulls. I've gotten really into skulls. Um, so that's my weird secret hidden talent is if you show me a dead thing skull, I can probably tell you what that dead thing is. This is where I really wish I had yeah. my skull kit with me and I'd just be like, boom, God, and you could like. I could give you a tour of my skull shelf if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna save your number. That might come in handy. You never know. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely like a superpower. It's very useful. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Lucas. Oh, okay. My hidden talent. Hi. Oh, sorry. I'm Lucas. I am the South Sound Secretary. Um, and I think my hidden talent. Probably, luckily, I don't have one on me, but probably playing harmonica, which is pretty sweet. It's definitely uh, good, like hidden instrument because you can like just pull it out of your pocket and be like. It is, yes, yeah, yeah. It fits this uh, mold really good. Um, I can play a few Neil Young songs, a few Abbott Brothers songs, and then my dad is like actually good at harmonica, and he can he sings the blues all day. So, kind of something I like to, something I took from him. So. Heck yeah. Oh, and I didn't introduce oh. myself. Liz Scott, I'm the Washington Regional Manager, one of two staff in Washington. I forgot that part. Really yeah. Thank you. I'm going <laughs> to pop it to Maya. Um, hi, I'm Maya. Um, I think my hidden talent, I'm pretty good at finding sea glass. Ooh. I'm going to give myself that. I really enjoy it, too. Found some pretty cool pieces. I, they're all in California right now, but I would say it's hidden talent. Um, I'll pass it to Christina. Thanks. Hi, I'm Christina. Um, serve on Tacoma City Council and also the executive director at Downtown On The Go. Um, and my hidden talents, it, this is really nerdy and also something to like keep secret because people ask you to volunteer um, if they know this, but um, doing mass mailings. I started, my first job was at a nonprofit, so I can sort those zip codes like exactly how the post office wants them. Thousands and thousands of, of mailers. That's awesome. Handy with a very specific crowd. <laughs> yeah, we'll also write that down. Thank you. <laughs> That's a good uh, segue to let you know that uh, there's an optional letter writing activity at the end of today. <laughs> so perfect. Woohoo. How about we pass it over to Gus? Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Gus Gates. I'm the Washington Policy Manager, uh, the second of two staff in Washington that works with all of our chapters around the state on uh, our statewide campaigns and policy initiatives. And I'm gonna kind of break the mold here a little bit since no one else has had any demonstrations. Uh, I've got props. Uh, so let's do this here. My hidden uh, activity is juggling and I've got a glow ball. So we're doing it and this is happening right now. Uh, I think it's kind of demonstrative of 
how I can juggle multiple things and lots of issues uh, at the same time and kind of get stuff done. So roll with that. And I'll pass it to Rennell, who I think is driving at the moment. <laughs> Maybe she can chime in here as well. You sent a little wave. You yeah, sent hi, a wave. <laughs> I have a question for Gus. Have you used that in a job interview? That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, like, that no. was brilliant, especially on Zoom. In the right? <laughs> With the glow ball, especially. Yes. Um, you know, that, that's a great. I have never been asked that question in, in a job interview. Uh, so I maybe one day I'll get that opportunity. I'll, I'm feeling pretty comfortable in my job right now. Uh, pretty happy with Surfrider. I love my job. So I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. But It'll be a really that. awkward time to yeah. <laughs> anything and, you know, Fun fact, um, I learned to juggle uh, when I was in grade school, actually. They taught us and like all kinds of crazy stuff like uh, pens and flaming torches and some people who were like really good actually even did knives. I was never that good, but I like to think that maybe I could aspire to that one day or maybe chainsaws. I don't know. I believe in you. Elementary school kids? That's freaking, hey. what a waiver. It sounds like a Florida school. My like, wife, my well, wife says that I went to circus school and it's not that far from the truth, but you know, Anyways, as, as Lucas said, I'm the resident homesteader uh, here on the call. So there you go. And you celebrated your anniversary with Surf Rider. So I think that's a big, like, big shout out for that. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. juggle 12 balls? I feel like every year of Surf Rider, oh. you should add a ball to juggle. I think they like it. <laughs> or, or a knife. Or a knife. Yeah. Maybe I should get like a, a 12 flag to fly out in front of my. Ooh. Can, like celebrate my 12 years and the Seahawks as well. I like it. Yeah. So with that, uh, just a couple announcements that I have, and then I'll open it to uh, all of you if you have any announcements. Um, we have our solo beach cleanup happening this weekend, October 10th through 11th. But again, go out, clean the beach. Um, we have a nice little report card that you can um, Submit that I think Lucas, if you could put that in the that link in the chat, that'd be rad. Um, and then we have started monitoring three new blue water task force sites. That's our full coliform water quality monitoring that our chapter does in the colder months. Usually the department of Ecology does that in the summer, and then we take over um, because we know that people like to play all year round. And so um, we added coca chest. Fox Island Sandspit as some new spots. So um, that is up and running. And I think we did that on Tuesday. Those results should be posted pretty soon. And um, I have a cute little collage of people's faces out collecting stuff that I'll be posting probably sometime tomorrow. So. On that note, I wanted to just give all of you and especially Renell a huge shout out. I was down in, um, in Tacoma a couple of weeks ago, uh, taking my family to the zoo. And we went to uh, Owen Beach and saw the signs up uh, for the monitoring. And I was I, like, took a picture, and you know, it was just such a great thing to see. And so happy um, that you're raising, you know, visibility about that awesome program and all the good work that you guys are doing. So keep on keeping on. That's rad. Can you guys hear me? I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh cool. That's a talent. Good, it's kind of fading in and out, so, so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, uh, Gus, on the signs, very cool. Um, I think Metro Parks is actually making some changes. Um, they've taken some of the Washington Department of Ecology signs down, I noticed, um, and theirs are usually up above ours or under ours. So hopefully they'll make those look a little nicer because they were super faded or graffitied, so. It won't, if there was a big blank um, area, it's just because they're, I think, making some changes. <laughs> Renal, do you have a hidden talent you'd like to share in the? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see. Um, probably, okay, preteen, young, uh, archer, and 
gunslinger probably um yeah not a lot of people know that i guess um i uh was part of a gun club when I, I got bored with Girl Scouts. So I joined a gun club and learned how to shoot targets and clay pigeons. <laughs> that's a that's a hard a hard left from Girl Scouts. I respect. <laughs> yeah. And then 4-H after that, you know, but yeah, you know, there's only so many badges you can get. I've, and well, and then, you know, the boys were saying, you know, you can't join the gun club because it's boys only. So uh, yeah. My best friend and I joined, and we were the only two girls of like a dozen boys. <laughs> so, that was awesome. Yeah. Very Any cool. Other announcements from anyone? Did you want a, a quick policy update or? Yeah, I think that would yeah? be. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe Liz, actually, can you go first with a couple of things? Um, and I finished my mouth while there. Uh, I don't really have a lot. Um, we're doing some seabed mining um, work. We're just kind of just launching a seabed mining campaign right now. We're reaching out to businesses to sign on to try to ban it in state waters because we don't we don't actually have any specific legislation around seabed mining in Washington State. Um, Oregon banned it in the 90s um, and we just don't have any specific regulations and it can be a very like it's an extractive industry um, and it has potentially some far reaching consequences um, with some pretty severe potential consequences for our coastal communities and economies because not only do you damage the extraction site where you're actually doing the mining, um, but there's sediment released um, at various stages in the process that can tr be transported over long distances on currents. Um, and a lot of those sediments are their tailings, they're mine tailings and so they, they have toxic uh, metals and things like that in them. And so they can be pretty damaging to the water column and coastal shellfish industries and things like that. So um, it's sort of a, it's in its beginning stages, but you'll, you'll definitely see more of that um, as it kind of progresses. Yeah, and I can kind of piggyback on that. Um, Liz did an excellent blog post on that. Uh, I think she sent it out last week to all of you. Um, but there's a really easy action that we're asking all chapters to help us on and getting um, local businesses to sign on in opposition to this. And so if you know, whether it be an ocean friendly restaurant or, you know, like the local surf shop or, or something like that, who relies upon a healthy ocean and a healthy Salish sea, um, the more the merrier on this effort. Um, you know, this is kind of, came on our radar screen um, in reaction to some of the executive orders from the federal administration um, that have come out and their interest in pursuing this activity off of America's coastline. And it's definitely, we know enough that it's concerning and, you know, knowing what we know about our existing um, uses and, and sustainable activities like recreation and fishing, Dungeness crab, especially off the Washington coast. It's definitely something that we're concerned about. And good news is, uh, actually I actually had a really good conversation this afternoon. We are um, drafting legislation on this for this next year. So um, we, we expect that this will be, you know, kind of a, a high profile campaign that we're gonna focus on. So. Uh, any help that you guys can do would be greatly appreciated. Take a look at the blog post. It has tons of information that really boils down the issue uh, in an easy to understand way and some great graphics. The other issue that I wanted to just mention was that we're working on is um, legislation around plastic packaging, uh, producer responsibility. And so kind of trying to shift the paradigm uh, basically on to those who produce all of the single use plastic waste and requiring them to pay for that, those materials up front rather than us as consumers trying to put those things into the recycle bin that ultimately might not be recyclable. Uh, this is a huge burgeon, burden on local communities around the state um, financially and it's something that we really need to get a a hold of and, and fix this recycling problem that we have right now in our state. So um, 
more to come on this issue. Liz and I were just chatting about this yesterday. Uh, we'd really like to dive in with a you know, more in-depth presentation on this and, and what it does, but it, there's definitely legislation that's being drafted on this. And, and I know, Christina, uh, we're getting you know, great support from City of Tacoma, uh, City of Seattle, King County, City of Spokane, all these local municipalities are, are really at the table and trying to find some solutions here. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard to say what, what's gonna move forward, but I, I think there's definitely some energy that's, that's kind of coming behind this, which is really encouraging. So excited to see this. And it looks like um, our previous legislation around a styrofoam ban might get folded into this as well. So um, more to come on this as it kind of evolves, but like I said, um, I think Liz and I are interested in, in finding a time that works for everybody to give a more in-depth presentation and um, kind of focus on some areas that you all might be able to help out in this effort. That would be a statewide um, initiative, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a statewide problem and yeah, it, it requires a statewide solution. Right. Awesome. Yes. Um, and then I see we have a phone number caller joining in. Um, I don't know if you want to let us know who's tuned in. We had a fun ice cream. Yeah, this is Sean Frostad. Hi. Hi, everyone. Sorry I was late. Um, I live in North Tacoma, and uh, I'm new to Surfrider probably within the last four months or so. Um, but I want to get involved in our environment means everything to me. That's probably my number one priority and charitable organization or cause, I should say. So um, I'm happy to be here and um, thanks for hosting. Yeah, thanks for being here, Sean. And uh, our thanks icebreaker was to share a hidden talent. So if I can put you on the spot really quick, do you have a hidden talent you'd like to share? You obviously don't have to demonstrate it. Um, gosh, my hidden talent uh, is painting. I, I, I'm an artist. Um, part-time and uh, I usually paint in sort of uh, nautical themes uh, abstractly. Uh, to be really specific, I paint ship holes. If you were to paddle up close to a freighter and take a look at all of the decay and rust and peeling paint, all of that color and all those changes that take place from the environment and uh, things like that are basically what I paint. And I, I like to go large format um panel sizes of four to eight are my favorite um but i scale it down to and uh, i do occasional street fairs and sell from my website things like that cool sean Where there's my hidden talent there's your hidden talent we want to see your hidden talent sometimes yeah what's what's your website um well my name is spelled s-h-o-n and my last name is frostad f-r-o-s T A D, and uh, it, so my website is seanfrostad uh, dot com, and I've got an Instagram page by the name of Sean Frostad. Um, that's about it. I'm currently not in any galleries or restaurants or anything like that. Um, so that's where you can see my work. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. And, and I poorly manage my uh, <laughs> my resources uh, in terms of online presence. So. Well, I'm throwing out condition out there, but. I'm <laughs> <laughs> following you now on Instagram. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It'll be interesting to know uh, who's attending the meeting and how I can connect with everyone. I may have missed that at the start of the meeting, or maybe we'll get to it. But yeah, looking and forward I to getting more involved. Well, yeah. For uh, when you register for the link, where it, that is a, tied to your email, and usually we send out a follow-up email so um you'll okay cool great okay. exciting so yeah uh with that i think our chapter is super stoked to have christina walker joining us um, she mentioned she's the tacoma city council member or a tacoma city council member as well as the um downtown on the go rock star so um, we're excited to hear about some various projects that um, you're up to that we can help get involved with and also talk a little bit more about the Tacoma Tide Flats 
um, interim regulations because after um, her presentation, we'll have some time to do a little letter writing activity. So stay tuned for that. But uh, for now, we're super excited to have Christina Walker join us. Uh, and I'm going to just turn it over to her. So Great, thanks. Um, thanks so much for having me. Um, I, as um, has been said, I am the executive director at Downtown On The Go, and we are a small nonprofit that um, does advocacy work around walking, biking, and transit. And so I'm a big bike rider, and that's how I met Renell and how I got, I got connected to, to you all. So I'm really happy to be here. And um, a couple of things. I know um, you invited me here as council member. I have you know about 15 things to share with you that I think are relevant and important and that you will like to hear about but I also have a couple of downtown the go things and I think there's a lot of places where we can align and probably work together in my day job as well um, so I will kind of throw those in there um, while we're here um, in fact we just have conversation internally about other um, like-minded organizations that we might um, do better um, collaborative work with so it was good timing that we had that conversation with my staff today. So anyway, I will start uh, though with my council hat on. Um, and as you all probably know, I just started my first term in January. So I have um, served um, the city council for longer under COVID than not. So don't ask me what's normal and what's not <laughs> because Zoom is my new normal. Um, as I know we're all uh, dealing with, but it has been for sure an interesting first year to be serving on the council. Um, and I do serve in a citywide capacity, so I am one of three um, citywide positions. Um, and that has also been a really interesting thing too, I think, I mean, uh, because I come from a transportation background and my passion is connecting transportation that is not single occupancy car, so trails, transit, um, sidewalks, I look at things from a network perspective and so being a citywide council member I think is a really good fit for me um, but the way that council members um, approach uh, challenges in the city is really interesting and I think an important thing for advocates like yourself to know just how people um, my colleagues and I respond to things because the district seats are really really um, honed in on what's in their district and are really responsive to the people that live there um, or the issues that are um, happening there and those of us who are citywide um, perform more of the larger picture stuff but also kind of back up um, if there's a sidewalk issue in South Tacoma I'm almost always cc'd on the response because people know I care about sidewalks uh, so things like that um, we don't all do everything and so I, I get a lot of questions of like hey how come you're the only one that showed up at this thing and it's not because my colleagues don't care it's that they know that it's something I'm really passionate about and that they know that I'll call them in if, if we need everybody there. So um, just know that about the, the structure of the council when you're um, advocating. Um, the other thing just generally to know um, is sort of a downtown on the go and council thing. Um, we started, I wanna say maybe four years ago at downtown on the go hosting speak up events. And um, they're just one hour events for local people who want to be more involved in local government. <laughs> It's billed as the, the who, what, and where of how to speak, um, speak up for walking, biking, and transit, but of course the concepts are, could be any topic that you're interested in. Part of that is that um, there's a lot of, even in a smallish, a smaller city like Tacoma, there's, you know, eight different agencies that, that tackle public issues. And so whether you should be speaking to city council, county council, metro parks, Pierce Transit, Sound Transit, or some other combination of those bodies is really important and you can be, um, or people can be much more effective as advocates if they're speaking to the right, right group. Um, and from a transportation perspective, I don't want you to have to take the bus all the way out to Lakewood to speak to your uh, transit board if it's an issue that the, count, or the, the city council is dealing with. And likewise, um, it's not helpful for you to come to city council and spend an entire evening with us when it's something that the your transit board actually has to deal with. So it's part about uh, just navigating that system and figuring out what works. And then we have these one hour sessions where people get together um, and talk about what they're passionate about and see where we can find crossover and work together. So um, that is one of the things that when I started on city council, you know, my top issue for sure is transportation. Um, 
you know, that's my personal passion, but also has been my day job for almost 10 years. Um, but also this issue of access and how more people can have access to government, break down the barriers and the just general confusion. Um, I've had a couple of times on council where it's like, if I can't find it on the website, like there's no way the, <laughs> the public can, so we need to fix it. Um, so really um, trying to work with the public um, to, to just help people understand the process. So if there are any questions like that, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I want to make it as easy as possible to, to get involved in, and make your voice heard. And the, the, the um, great thing about the, the last six months is so many more people are involved and the Zoom meetings, while we know they're not accessible to everybody because not everyone has internet, they have opened up a whole new group of folks who are involved in city government because you can pop into a Zoom council meeting and still be making your dinner or taking care of your kids or whatever you need to be doing. So that is really exciting. It's been really fun to see more people um, step up and, and get involved. Um, so I will just start with just kind of running down a couple of things that I've worked on this year. Um, as I said, probably six times <laughs> um, my background is transportation. And so right off the, the bat, when I started, um, started working with Council Member Beal on a Vision Zero resolution. And we passed that in early February. And that is a transportation specific Vision Zero. It means zero roadway deaths. Um, we put our deadline as 2035. Um, cities and countries around the world have done this um, work and everybody has um, sort of a different deadline. We wanted to make it soon enough to feel like we needed to do some work, um, but also a realistic goal. So that is, um, uh, requires the city to take action on things like crosswalks, um, things like uh, speed cameras, things like speed limits, um, and just, uh, safer design for all people. It starts really with the pedestrian uh, because everyone's a pedestrian at some point. Um, whether, even if you're driving, you're getting out of your car and walking to your destination. Um, even if you're in a wheelchair and don't actually walk, you need that infrastructure to be safe, even probably more so. Um, so it, it, um, it holds the city accountable and that work has already started. Um, the staff has done a great job of ramping that up even in in uh, COVID work from home times. Um, so that work is well underway. Um, and then recently um, we have done, I don't know if you guys have had a presentation from council member Beal, if he's come in and, and talked with you, but um, he has been probably the biggest climate advocate on the council in, in recent years. And he and I worked um, just this last couple of weeks on incorporating um, climate work and, um, the tenants of the climate emergency that the council passed last December into our state legislative action. And so I would love to hear Liz and Gus um, from you guys when we, I think I was just looking at my agenda for next Tuesday, it's not on there. I think it's like in two weeks that we, we pass that final state agenda where there are crossover points there, but um, was happy to get a couple additional uh, pieces in there um, in the state legislature or legislative agenda. We know, of course, this year is going to be a bizarre year at the state, and I've been told to keep my expectations low, but um, we do have some good stuff in there that will set the stage for the following year, as well as a um, couple different trail projects and transit projects that I am passionate about that obviously impact um, climate as well. Um, the other piece that, it, uh, as I mentioned, I'm really passionate about is access and um, in the proposed budget that we just got on Tuesday, so we're all still digesting, you know, 400 pages, um, but we got the high level presentation. Um, we did, um, one of my uh, council rec or budget requests was a language um, access money so that we could be translating more information. And um, we don't want to just translate the postcard and, and have that go out and then have people calling us um, and not be able to respond or not have them be able to engage. So we're going to do a year long, assuming this passes in the budget, do a year long pilot with Spanish language specifically so that we can actually have staff that can respond. Um, so it's not just the translation piece of that. So I'm excited about that piece and, and, and confident and hopeful that that'll stay in the budget as we go forward. Um, I think the biggest piece right now um, that we're working on is our transformation work. And you've likely, if you're involved at all, um, 
have heard us talk about that. We do get an update on that every week. Um, we passed a resolution in June saying that we were committed to becoming an anti-racist city and that we we're going to start with transformation of the um, policing, but also that we would not stop there, that it is also to carry on through every department in the city. And so we've, you know, we've just started that work. The uh, staff has formed quite a bit of the underlying work um, to make those transformations happen. And then just this last week, we dedicated um, a little bit of money towards forming this um, community group that will start that work. And our hope is to really create some grassroots, um, bottom up change in the city, both, you know, again, starting with policing and community safety, um, but also what we need to do internally and, and through our departments. There's a couple, a number of things, you know, we have a great Office of Equity and Human Rights. That's something that we've had for many years. I'm not exactly sure what year it started, but I know a lot of cities are like reacting to what's happened in 2020 by starting this work. Um, we at least have a lot of those pieces in place so that we can uh, not start from, from zero. So um, I say this, partly because I think it's important everybody knows, but also to watch out for the, that community group will be formed really soon. And we're looking for community members to be around that table. I don't know that we've decided on the number, but it will be a fairly large group. Um, and I advocated to budget for that, the people around that table to get paid a small stipend for their time. Um, and so we really want to make sure that we're reaching into the community in not the typical or typical places or that it's not people that are already involved in, in some level. So please help us spread the word or if you're interested, um, uh, take a look at that. I believe they said it's gonna, the application will be out within the, the week. So look for that. Um, and then with that, um, we also saw the first draft of the budget, as I mentioned, and so we are digging through that. Um, we are facing a 40, million dollar budget shortfall, although it's a little bit less uh, than 40 million worth of cuts because we did save money in 2020 um, as the city manager sort of saw this coming. So it's it's not as painful as maybe we thought it was going to be, but cuts are never fun and we're really trying to do some things differently and um, take some money out of traditional policing and put it towards community safety models um, that are social services focused and put the community first without getting ahead of a discussion with the community and this group. So there are some flexible dollars in there that are dedicated to that purpose, um, So, which I think is really exciting um, and a little nerve wracking, right? Because we don't know exactly where they're going, but um, I think there's we're making some steps, steps forward there. Um, and that budget process is uh, if you have feedback on that, um, send that, you know, early and often. <laughs> just keep talking to us about what you want to see in there. And I'm just going to check my calendar. The final, so there'll be official public hearings and things on the budget, but there, um, we will sign that off um, and make it official on November 24th. So essentially, you know, nothing's done until then but I would recommend getting your budget items in kind of before November um, to be as impactful as possible. Um, do you all work with, um, or I should say, what city staff do you work with? Do you work with Christy Lynette in the Office of Environment and Sustainability or I don't think we haven't worked like directly with anybody as I guess the South Sound chapter. I don't know if okay. Washington chapter wide or I guess I think I think there's been touch and go partnerships here and there. There's sure, been sure. Over, but like I can't be like oh yeah this is my person that I. Okay so uh, yeah. Christy Lynette is the person in charge of the environmental action plan and she's fantastic. Um, she might be a great guest at a future meeting as well, just to run through that plan. Um, but if you, 
Oh, I'm saying this because if you have very specific budget um, items, it's probably, I mean, definitely email the council and put pressure on. That's definitely worthwhile. Um, but the, I'm not totally clear yet what level of detail I will get down into. And so if it's something really specific to an environmental program, it might be worth just checking in with Christy on what's in there. So uh, That's not to, if we have any other like, because I feel like I know we've had people present and I'm Christy definitely is a familiar name. Um, I don't know if Gus had a more another answer to that connection question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is good. This is the opportunity. We'll make some connections. It'll be great. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the only person that I talk with is Metro Parks and it's Amy, uh, I think, Boucher, Boucher. Um, but she, <clears throat> She just helps me get access to the beaches and everything. She's like the community and special projects coordinator. And that's my connection with. Oh, cool. Okay. Because I'm also thinking um, we did some work recently and we're going to put forward a piece that I know is not directly related to your work, but around um, more urban forestry, more urban trees, particularly more fruit trees, and then more urban gardens, just easing the regulation so we can do more of that. Um, which might be of interest to folks. So, uh, but I will be happy to make those connections so that you guys have go-to staff because they often are more useful than elected <laughs> officials. Um, however, <laughs> you should still put the pressure on council for the things that you want to see happen. Um, I absolutely um, encourage, strongly encourage that. Um, so the last budget thing that I just wanted to mention is um, last week we did pass um, what is called our council contingency fund um, and this is something that happens not necessarily at any given time during the year but it usually towards the end of the year when council members see things that got lost during the year or we couldn't find funding from or didn't get a grant for and are able to put some dollars towards so we were able to put some council contingency funds towards the fossil fuel study. Um, and for those following interim regulations, this is probably a familiar um, term. Uh, so last uh, November, uh, and I guess it was October that they were doing the hearings and things for the interim regulations, um, they added an amendment that asked the staff to do a fossil fuel study. Um, part of the issue is there's a feeling um, among everybody, no matter what side of the issue you sit on, that we don't have a clear understanding of what's coming in and out of the port. And so we couldn't make good policy decisions without the, that report. So the council requested that. Um, so that was last uh, October. And then we, I guess it got lost in the COVID. We're not exactly sure, but... Um, when we started asking questions kind of in April, May, when we did the last round of interim regulations, um, everyone kind of said, well, no, we don't really have the dollars for that. So we figured out how to get the dollars in there and that study is gonna happen. Um, and I think this is a really important piece, again, whether you're pro oil or pro environment or somewhere in the middle, like everybody wants this information because then we can have a better discussion about it. So, um, it was you know, an easy thing to support um, and we're really, really pushing the timeline so that we can um, have that information when we go through the next round. So um, interim regulations for those who, I'm sure you all know probably more than me, you've probably been more involved, um, but obviously I don't think you can be in Tacoma and be involved at all in the public sector without having heard of interim regulations over the last few years. It was actually one of the first things when I decided to run for council. I was like, well, I guess I got to figure this thing out <laughs> and understand all the details of it. Um, so we had a public hearing last week, uh, September 29th. Uh, next week, the 13th, we will have the first reading of the ordinance. And then on October 20th will be the final reading of the ordinance. Um, so we are right in the thick of it. So if you have anything to say about them, now is the time to do your letter writing campaign um, and send lots of emails. Um, the um, 
process right now, again, as I'm sure you all know, is that we go through this every six months. And as long as we are passing interim regulations, it has to happen every six months. That's a, it, a, in state code. Um, and the proposal right now, it's not an official proposal, but the, um, the conversation right now is how to make them permanent because nobody likes going through this process every six months. The mayor, in fact, put forward a resolution in May or April when we were passing the May uh, uh, interim regulations that asked them to be permanent. Um, ended up pulling that at the last minute, um, but it is my understanding that that was a signal that we were going to do this. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it, it wasn't put forward right now. Um, I, I think maybe there was some um, thought that in the midst of the budget process, maybe it was one too many things. But right now it is interim regulations. I'm also under the impression at this point that there is not a group of folks that want to put forward new or any changes to that, that there is a feeling that we pass this one more time and then we spend the next six months making them permanent. Um, there is some general confusion about what that looks like <laughs> um, and what we need to do to get there, but there is absolute commitment from um, most council members, the people that I've talked to, I certainly can't speak for everybody, that, that, we, that that's where we need to go. Um, and so we did get a, a presentation a couple weeks ago from our legal staff saying what is and isn't possible. Um, and so the goal now is, you know, if we pass those on the 20th, which we're scheduled to do in whatever form that is, um, that we start the next day on getting the issues resolved that need to make this these permanent. So we are, um, I would say number one is, I don't know anybody that doesn't want them to be made permanent, but I do know there is a wide uh, breadth of, <laughs> ways people want those to be permanent or what they want that to look like. Um, I d generally think that there's a good um, appetite for putting caps on on things as long as there's some certainty around what that is going forward because that's the biggest complaint that we've heard from the business community is that they don't like the uncertainty of it every six months. I totally get that. Um, we don't either, <laughs> frankly, um, but figuring out how we get to a um, uh, some sort of agreement that everybody can live with is is the question. And so there'll be lots of discussion about that. I would strongly recommend if you're sending letters now that you include what you're what you'd like that to to look like. I mean, given the timeline, right? You know that if you're sending a letter now, you're sending it about interim regulations. But you could certainly put a paragraph in there about, and we understand the city's interested in permanent. Here's what we'd like that to look like. So. Um, that's where we are on, on interim regulations. The other thing that perhaps people are interested in hearing about is the, and I keep getting this wrong, so I have um, a one pager about this, the Seaport Sound Terminal moderniz Modernization Project that has been up for a SEPA analysis um, and is still in the process. And I know in meeting with a couple other environmental groups, the push uh, is really to um, ask for an environmental impact statement from them as they're expanding their capacity at the port or in the port, sorry. And I know it's really important, I'm sure you all know this, the you know Port of Tacoma as a the public entity is different from the tide flats and the work that happens in the port area. Um, and so the seaport is not part of the Port of Tacoma, but um, right there on the on the water but the expansion does fit in with the current shoreline permits so they, they are not um, violating any of the of those terms of their um, you know where they're operating so um, I will stop talking but I will <laughs> let you know uh, happy to answer any questions and then also um, that I'm available. I'll put my email in the chat box for those who want to talk further or even just send me emails. I also did start an Instagram account um, so that I can try to get more information out to the public just about what's happening on council. Um, I, you know, kind of figuring out what, what that's going to be 
what that's going to look like right now is just purely informational about letting you know what's on the agenda every week and, and what's happening at the city. So happy to take questions. And thank you so much, Christina. That's a lot of a lot of good information there. And um, I know I have a couple things written down that I need to <laughs> should process. But yeah, over for questions. Um, if anyone has one right away. Um, And I am more than happy to answer questions, like if you take the day to think about things and, <laughs> and want to ask later too. So this isn't your only opportunity. Uh, I, I, I had a couple questions. I had a couple like clarifying. Um, so you were talking about access earlier. I know this, um, I know that's what you were saying earlier. And you're talking about uh, translating more information from English to and having also Spanish. Are you just talking about like signage or like what is that kind of uh, yeah, great question. So from the city government perspective, I'm talking mostly about um, information to get engaged. Um, so public meetings um, and w places to get your questions answered. So specifically around, um, you know, well, I mean, the Seaport Sound Terminal project is a perfect example. They sent postcards out and said there's a public meeting, but of course it was all in English. So if there's a, a project in your community and we know that there's in that neighborhood, there's, you know, three different languages that the information goes out in all those languages. The city did do a couple years ago, and I don't know any details about this. I know about it for, as a community member in the Lincoln District. They ha they hired a full-time staff for that project who had a storefront in the Lincoln District uh, that spoke the language most common in that district. And it, from all reports, it sounded like it was really great and really um, got more people involved and more valuable feedback for the project for the I will say I am also working on a project in my day job around more signage translation, um, particularly it started out as a conversation around Swan Creek um, and a group that was doing a cleanup there. Um, and then I don't know if you know about the Swan Creek Community Garden, but it's it's really, really diverse. Um, it's beautiful space and it's kind of tucked back in, in on the trails. Um, and so they've translated some things for the garden, um, but they were, you know, all the directional signage and everything is only in English. So we started a conversation with Downtown on the Go and the Health Department and Metro Parks to, about translating the signs. And not that we can translate everything into every language, but just how important it is, how much more welcoming we look as a community if we're attempting <laughs> to translate. And then using more, uh, Metro Parks has done a good job of starting to use more symbols on things so that they're um, a little bit more universal. Um, so there's a big uh, push around Swan Creek, but I would love to see that other places as well. I do know there are places that we started adding the Puyallup um, names on some bigger street signs, which is great to see as well. So I would love to work on that more from a council perspective, but the budget item that I mentioned earlier was specific to outreach around projects. Gotcha. Thank you. And then um, I had one other question. You were talking about, uh, you said that you're going to get like, or for the climate emergency, um, you're going to get some good stuff uh, that like help stage for next year. What exactly are you like referring to in that instance? Yeah, so I would be happy to share the our state legislative agenda as soon as I have it. The initial um, proposed uh, legislative agenda had a section on um, environmental stewardship, but that was it. And so we added some more language around um, the climate crisis. It has, um, I don't know where we landed on the language around supporting the clean fuel standard, but that's something that the council has supported in the past. So that was a relatively easy one to support. Um, to supporting um, green building standards and around energy and um, heating specifically. That's a big one. Um, and then uh, supporting, there is another, 
there's a water quality bullet in there as well. So I'll send you the, the full thing, but it, I think it, it turned out to be a great list. The first draft that's public that you could find on the website does not include it. So Chris and I, uh, Councilmember Beal and I circled back and added some things in. So I'll share it as soon as I, I get it. Um, again, it's, you know, our wish list at the state level. So um, when, it, when it comes to what we're gonna do internally, that's kind of another question and one that we need some work on, but we have that climate emergency resolution from December that we can keep uh, calling back to. And I also, um, this is our tactic at Downtown on the Go when we deal with elected officials, um, is remind them what they already voted on. <laughs> Um, at Downtown on the Go, we always remind them that they passed a resolution that it requires health in all policies. Um, and this is a great one for air quality too, or water quality. I mean, I think you can tie it back to that. And I always say like, if you add up all the resolutions that council has already passed, like it all points to the thing that I want. Health in all policies, the climate <laughs> emergency, um, access and transportation, <laughs> um, equity, in all policies. So find, dig those things up and add them into your, your language and say, hey, you already passed this on this date. Um, we just, we're just here to help you implement it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for answering. That gives me some great ideas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I would just piggyback on that a little bit on the, on the climate uh, front, you know, you know one of the issues that all of our coastlines are facing is this challenge of sea level rise and uh, increasing coastal hazards with climate change. I know that Washington Sea Grant and others have done some work and um, <clears throat> Tacoma was kind of a focus area of that. And so I would encourage you to, you know, also think adaptation and resiliency uh, just given the number of shoreline miles that uh, the city of Tacoma has within its area um, and just, you know, the sensitive habitats that are there. Uh, and, and especially, you know, the, some of the underserved communities um, that reside around some of those areas and, and how we can kind of get ahead of the curve and be leaders and and embracing this challenge of climate change and, and how we as a coastal community are adapting to that and, and taking action in the right direction. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious um, if you guys have been involved or if you have thoughts on the work that Metro Parks did at Owens Beach that was specific to moving the shoreline back and at preparing for future sea level rise. I was really impressed that they included that in the project, but um, you know, that's not my area of expertise. So I'm curious if you guys have thoughts on that or if you know about that project. This is the first I've heard of it, but having just visited that park recently, it was definitely something that kind of came to my mind as I was there and, and thinking about that. And, you know, um, I, I'd be curious to hear if, if others with more of a pulse in the local area might have heard about that. I know a little bit about it, um, and I was kind of curious when they're actually going to close Owen Beach. I know COVID has probably caused um, that to be delayed, um, but uh, it's a two-year closure from what I remember seeing, and I personally have been pretty impressed uh, with them moving forward on, well, with the fact that they were <laughs> moving on that at all, um, because I think they're one of the few that actually are. <laughs> in you know the Puget Sound or Western Washington. Yeah, I w I'm curious about that too. I'll ask some questions. I have a meeting tomorrow morning with some Metro Parks people so I can maybe find out, can let you know. Um, and I do know because I was involved as a community member on the Rust and Way project that that's a big part of that conversation. That one is going to need some uh, push from the advocacy community because the timeline for that is I mean, it's wonderful that they're thinking about climate change, but by the time that project gets done, we're going to be well <laughs> into the sea level rise. So, um, you know, and, and I'm in on that project from 
my with my downtown on the go hat because we want to connect the trail from downtown to the beach. I mean, it just opens up access to so many more people in Tacoma because the bus doesn't go down there. You have to take a bus to downtown and then we need a trail to get the rest of the way. Um, the Anyway, I, I was really impressed with the planners at Metro Parks because they were really um, highlighting sea level rise and the impacts that it, it's going to have. But um, if that project could we need to get it going. <laughs> I mean, again, COVID, right? But should be a priority. Well, it's really great to hear that the planners are, are really focusing on that. Uh, I think that's a huge step in the right direction. Who is the person, like, if we wanted to learn more about that or communicate on that, who's the, the Rest and Way project. Yeah. So I just Googled it the other day to send to a constituent. And so the website is still really active if you just do Rest and Way Visioning Project. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure their uh, like project director is Marty Stump. And my guess is he'd be happy to talk about it. But I don't know where it stands right now. If, if it's just on pause or, but yeah. That would definitely be. I think we do a lot of beach cleanups and that's some of our water quality testing sites are along there. So that'd be really interesting to hear more from them and see how we can. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to shoot up the link for the interim, right? The little, 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 <laughs> the Tacoma Tide Flat Interim Regulation Link um, Citizens for Healthy Bay put together a nice little a uh, set of information as well as at the bottom you can click to um, be part of that letter writing campaign um, and it sounds like we'll put our heads together and kind of talk about how we can best craft something that gets our future vision of <laughs> that clearly communicated to the city council and see what happens when things go permanent so um, we'll be involved with that for sure but um, yeah I think any other questions from anybody? Well, I just want to say thank you so much, Christina, uh, for taking the time out of your personal life to come and talk with us about these important issues. And especially, I really appreciate, you know, um, the focus of diversity, equity, and inclusion that's happening. Um, within the Tacoma City Council right now. And I think there's a real opportunity uh, on so many different levels to be leaders in so many of these challenges that we face. So thank you for all that you do. And thanks for um, reaching out to us and, and sharing some of this information. And we look forward to working with you moving forward. Absolutely. We'll follow you on Instagram. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. It was great to meet you all. And again, you know, send me an email. Let me know uh, if you have ideas or thoughts. You don't always have to send a formal email. I know, I feel like before I was on council, I was always so careful about sending really formal emails. Um, it, and those are nice too, but I love it when people just send me articles and are like, hey, look at what this city is doing. We should do this in Tacoma. It's helpful. Helps us think. That's really beautiful. That's like, I didn't like recognize that as a barrier to communication, but that's such a nice like extension of like, hey, just like talk to me. Like that's, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for being so involved and, and caring so much about the community. And I'm sure I will see some of you at future council meetings or hopefully see your, your name in my inbox. Well, cool. thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Good night. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Sean, thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you're. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. You're welcome, and thanks for having me. It was a pleasurable meeting. Yeah, yeah. we're we're excited to. It's, it's a weird time to have all the events, but eventually, you know, we're, we're just keeping it rolling and rocking. And yeah, it's nice. Uh, very grassroots, it appears, with the South Sound chapter. So. Yeah, I'm happy to be on board. Well, we're excited to follow you on Instagram too. So <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I was looking at your gallery. It looks great. It's really cool. Oh. I like it. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. Yeah.
So how large is, a, is the chapter enrollment? If you guys all have time just for a little bit. Oh, yeah, totally. um, I don't know that I have that number off the top of, I think really around 60, but okay. I, don't know, I don't know what are updated. I would, yeah, I would say we're between like 60 and 80. And then on top of that, we usually have 12 to 16 people here during our uh, pandemic chapter meetings. And then uh -huh. also with the pandemic, we usually average um, for right now, we're doing solo beach cleanups and they haven't been super successful. But um, in the last year, I would say we average probably 20 to uh, 40 people on our beach cleanups and sometimes even more. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gathering some friends together, trying to recruit as many as I can for this weekend. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that'd be great. Um, I included a link to, I don't know, are you on Facebook, Sean? Uh, I have an account. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Well, you can also use our website, I think. Um, I haven't checked it to make sure that that information is up there, but here's the link again um, in chat. And that'll bring you to the event and that'll give you the information. You can do it um, anytime, all weekend. There's a data card on there and you can submit it to our email. And if you also, on your Instagram, if um, you share your photos with us, um, I'll go ahead and I'll follow you there too. But um, we, you know, we can uh, th throw that stuff up there too. So that'd be excellent. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it'll be great just to get connected with you all. And yeah, wow forward. Oh, well, cheers, everybody, and have a lovely rest of your evening, and y'all rock. <laughs> uh, great to meet yeah. you. I'm, yeah, great to meet you, and thank you, Liz and Gus, for showing up. I love when you're at our meetings, and I miss you guys, and obviously, Stina, you're great, too, but these guys are <laughs> I see Stina all the time, so uh, I'm just happy Lucky. to see you all. <laughs> miss you all, too, and it's great to see you, and thank you all for all that you do. Yep. and uh, making the dream work so and I just uh, I just stocked and numbers and you have over 60 paying members but your mem like your newsletter goes out to like 918 people I think that was uh that was because me and Ken went to a, a Grateful Dead concert <laughs> <laughs> and we made our action to uh sign up on our email and man that was awesome please Best tell me that's a been story. ever <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing i could be wrong i might that might be a typo but i'm pretty sure that's, that's no we we added like i remember we added like four or five hundred people it was it was insane so that's a true story oh my yeah. god yeah that, that, that just that made was, 2020 yeah that, i think that was 2018 and uh yeah it was hilarious it was a great time <laughs>